Hey, this is Ryan from AccuTune Off-Road, and today I want to talk a little bit about shock rebuilding, uh, how long you can expect to go between rebuilds, uh, both mileage and time-wise, some maintenance items you can do to help your shocks last longer, and also to kind of give you some insights on some things that may be signs that your shocks are coming due for rebuild. The frequency at which your shocks need to be rebuilt can vary greatly by the vehicle they're on, the type of terrain you're running, and the size of shock that you've, you've got on your vehicle. So we typically say about 50,000 miles is a good benchmark. That can go up drastically. We've seen 100,000 miles, no problem. And we've seen as low as 10,000 miles or less on daily driver vehicles, uh, just depending on the type of terrain. Uh, one of the big things that really wears them out is mud, sand, uh, anything that can kind of get on the shaft and get up in the seals really wears the shocks out a lot more quickly. Um, washboard roads, anything that puts a lot of heat in the shocks also works to wear them out very quickly. So for example, if you've got a two inch shock on a big three quarter ton or one ton truck and you're running a ton of fire road, that shock's not gonna last as long as say a 2.5 just being driven daily on the street. So the, the size of the shock, your application, and the terrain that you're running really make a big difference. Um, Timeline wise for the dedicated off-road guys, uh, three to five years is kind of the range for your typical uh, off-road buggy. Pre-runners that are really going out and hitting the desert hard should probably have them looked at yearly. So that's kind of a general idea of where you are timeline wise, and we'll get into a little bit more of things you're going to see if you're coming due for a rebuild that can kind of give you a hint of hey maybe I should get these taken looked at get these looked at before I go out again and have a problem. One of the most common signs that your shocks are due for rebuild is oil leaking. It's it's pretty obvious but there can be a lot of bad consequences if you let it go on and so most of the leaking is going to come out of the seals right here where the shaft goes in. It just sees all that wear from cycling back and forth and any nicks or dings in the shaft will start wearing on that very quickly. Uh, these seals also get the hottest, so if you're really working your, your shock hard, these seals are taking a lot of heat and a lot of wear very quickly. The other thing we get is uh, leaking out of the fittings and the hose. The, the hoses can get abraded. They, they can also get worn out just from being cranked over in a weird position for too long and typically you'll see that right here at the junction where the hose goes into the crimp collar. That's its weakest point. And so if you'll start getting some weeping there and you wipe it off and it comes back, then it's a good sign your hose is leaking. If you run your shock for too long leaking, it will eventually run low on oil. And the oil keeps everything inside the shock spaced properly and lubricated. So one of the first things that will happen is parts will start running to each other that are not meant to and that greatly accelerates the wear on your shock and make your, re make your rebuild very expensive. Uh, the next thing that happens is you start losing lubrication on critical parts of the shock, which can really start wrecking the internal parts and sometimes ruin the entire shock. Clunking is the next sign that your shocks are really ready for a rebuild right away. Inside, especially in the reservoir here, and this will happen in an internal reservoir or IFP shock as well, is that there's a piston in here that separates the nitrogen and the oil, and that seal can fail. And so even if you're not having external leaking, you may have internal leaking. And you'll start to hear clunking because it's either at one end or the other of the remote reservoir cylinder. And that clunking is it basically banging into stuff and starting to wreck things inside of your shock and you're probably also not getting proper lubrication. So if your shock is clunking internally, you gotta take it off and, and send it in for rebuild right away. Rod ends are another major concern. Sometimes they squeak and rattle and it's, it's a sign they need to rebuild but not urgently. But if you let that go on too long or it's bad enough and you just haven't noticed, it can get real ugly real quick. We have seen these wear completely through on shocks like this, I've seen them wear completely through the cap and basically wreck the whole shock. And they can also get pressed out or just worn out to the point they completely come apart. 
and that can get to be a pretty dangerous situation. So if your rod ends are clicking and squeaking and making noise, don't put another 10,000 miles on it. You know, get that taken care of quickly because it can get real expensive if it wears all the way out. Another intermediate problem that's gonna tell you that your shock is coming due for rebuild is gonna be uh, scratched and dented uh, shock shafts. And so you can see here, there's tons of little nicks and pits. And this can run the gamut from, you better get that sucker rebuilt right now, to it'll last a while longer. Depending on the severity, sharpness, and location of the scratch, the more frequently that is to go inside the shock and the sharper it is, the less life cycle you're gonna get out of that combination. But any of these chips and scratches are wearing away at your seals at the bare minimum, letting oil escape every time it goes through the shock. And so if you've got damaged shafts, especially rust, sharp issues, it's a good sign that that shock should be sent in because it's gonna start causing damage to other parts of the shock and causing leaking. If you notice that your truck or SUV is acting funny, you know, bumps you used to hit that it absorbed really nicely are suddenly jarring. If you find that it's a lot bouncier than it used to be, you're noticing a loss in performance, that's a really good sign that something inside is worn out. We may not see leaking oil, we may not hear clunking noises, but something inside has changed and something's not happy. The, the oil could be worn out, there could be broken shims, who knows? But if you notice a loss in performance, it's a good time to go ahead and take those shocks off and send them in and get them serviced. Similar to a loss in performance is bad tire wear. If you notice that the tire's wearing funny, the alignment's good, the, the tires are good quality, it's worth checking the shocks and making sure that that's not a cause. You'll typically notice a loss in performance with that, but uh, bad tire wear can definitely be caused by worn out shocks. If you're starting to notice uh, decreases in performance, uh, weird tire wear, um, other issues not directly related to leaking externally, one of the first things to check is gonna be the nitrogen pressure. You can't do this on all shocks, but on the ones that you can, it's worth checking. And uh, most shocks, we want 200 PSI in the reservoir when the shock is fully extended. Uh, the Kings want 150 PSI fully extended. If you have big reservoirs and it's difficult for you to take the shocks off, you can check them at ride height. If you're checking at ride height, it should have more than 200 PSI in them. Just try to make sure you don't let any pressure out or substantial amount of pressure out in the process. If they're low, you can attempt to refill them uh, at ride height because it's better than nothing. You know, go to 220 PSI or 250 PSI, put a little bit extra in there to try and get them back over that 200 mark uh, because they're sitting at ride height not fully extended. You can also check your bearings and bushings externally. The bushings like this should generally be squeezed until they're about the same diameter as the washer. And if they're bulging out way past that, if they've got cracks or splits, that could be causing some of the noise you're hearing. The bushings, you know, they are urethane, they do get hard and crack over time. And so you can check to make sure that your bushings aren't uh, cracked and causing some of your clunking. The, the bearings you can look uh, externally and just make sure they're not rusty, they're not, not packed full of dirt, and um, just see if they cause any rattles. And that can help diagnose maybe some of the issues you're having, uh, maybe without sending the shocks in. There are things that you can do and that we highly recommend to make your shocks last longer so they don't need to be rebuilt as frequently. The first is simply just washing them. Every time you wash your car, you spray it out underneath to get all the mud and and sand and stuff out from underneath it. You should also be washing your shocks. The shocks are perfectly fine with uh, high pressure water and you know really getting them to clean. Uh, the only thing we recommend is do not directly spray the seal right here with high pressure water. Uh, to clean this off, go in and, and do it by hand, low pressure water and get that clean. But we really want to see the shafts clean for longevity so it's Anything that's really stuck on there, you can get off so that the wiper doesn't have to do it. And then cleaning the bodies can help them last longer so that they don't uh, get corroded too quickly. 
on the bodies. You can also use uh, light duty car wax and automotive wax. You don't want anything that's gonna like go in there and really scratch it up, but just a, a real like um, wax can, can help keep the mud and, and corrosion off of them. And we've even seen some people in really corrosive environments put uh, heavy duty grease, makes the shocks look a little ugly by itself, but they do last a little longer because they're not all rusty. If you do decide that your shocks are due for a rebuild or other service, we are happy to help you out. If you were lucky enough to have purchased your shocks from us, we will give you 25% off on labor for all of the service and rebuild work. It's also a good time to take advantage of our free revalve if you'd like to do that. And we do try and our best to stock all the parts to be able to rebuild these and turn them around quickly. But please contact us in advance so that we can make sure we have what you need in stock so that we don't have to wait too long. For more information, send us an email to sales at accutuneoffroad.com or check us out online on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you.